In this video, I'd like to share with you guys my entire miniature painting process so that I break things down into little steps and I don't get afraid even if I'm faced with a big project. Then the entirety of the cosmos is accessible to each and every individual mind connected to the great mind. Welcome back to the channel collectors. So let's face it, intimidation is a very very real emotion. Imagine having a huge pile of grey or having a huge project before you and you have no plan of completion. You are here and the mountains all the way up here and you don't know how to get there. That's very real. It happens to every one of us. Therefore, it's important for us to break down the miniature painting process into little steps so that we can gradually achieve our final product. The aim of this video is so that I can hopefully share with you guys my thought process of how I break things down into small individual achievable steps and so that you can also break down your projects into achievable steps and everybody can get painting and finish our projects ASAP. So before I begin, I'm going to just roughly outline my process so that you get a better understanding of my miniature painting process. So the overlay of my process is pretty simple, it's just like building a home. You want to do the big strokes first and then go into the little details later. So as we're building a home, the first thing to do is have the foundations built strong and built right and then eventually move on to the bricks and then laying the concrete and eventually with the well painting the house, get very careful and close up the little details so that you get a finished built house. In no part of the process do you lay one brick and paint really really fine details and that doesn't make sense because many of the fine details that you are going to do in the early stages will be either destroyed or covered off with bigger details. However, as a premise, this is my painting process. I don't profess to be the best painter in the world. There are many other painters who differ from this and have achieved amazing results. Take for example, Redef and Flamion. They like to paint individual components to the maximum detail before moving on to the next component and they are somehow able to balance the entire miniature very well and I find that really really amazing. So the first step for me to paint miniatures would be to consider the composition of the miniature. By saying composition, what I'm actually meaning is I want to think about how I want the audience to interact with the piece. Do you want the audience to turn the miniature around? Do you want the audience to look in the miniature with a vertical, horizontal gaze? These are things that I consider before I start the miniature project. So as a miniature artist, what I do is I play the space and the available details so that I'm able to allow the audience to interact with the piece the way I want them to do. So in order to get a composition right, sometimes I do it digitally as seen with my Stormcast diorama where I photoshop the pieces and sort of get a spatial estimation of how the miniature is gonna be before I actually cut up some blocks and paste stuff in. As soon as the digital thing makes sense to me sometimes, what I do is I get a couple of paint bottles, a bit of blue tag, paste them all together to see how they all interact with each other spatially. Sometimes an idea you have in mind might not work out in real life so you always have to put the miniatures in perspective to see whether this really works out or not. One common mistake that I've always seen beginner painters do is that they have too little details in such a big space. They have a really really large net or diorama with only a little bit of bigger reeds and yeah, there's so much empty space that is not covered. We have to understand that we are working with miniatures and when interacting with miniatures, people tend to go very very close and when you go very close, such a big empty space up there is magnified to an insane level. So after placing the miniatures in their composition, we also have to consider two factors that the composition is for. Number one, composition is about story elements. How you place the miniatures relative to each other is important because it tells a story. Miniature painting is not about just achieving the smoothest blends and showing off awesome techniques. It's also about storytelling. How you place the miniatures relative to each other is going to tell a story. So always going back to the Stormcast diorama, is this an ambush for Stormcast? 
oh, say for example, my Necron diorama, which I painted earlier, is this gonna be some kind of pending invasion? Is this the first moment? These are things that I'm considering when I'm telling the story, when I'm making a particular miniature. Secondly, the miniatures also help educate the viewer of what the lighting situation is. Because the miniatures are placed in a certain way, they are able to receive and reflect light from the environment. And this will influence how you place the lights and whether the lighting situation makes sense or not. So after the composition, the next thing is to consider the lighting situation and the environment and to consider the lighting situation of the miniature. In this step, I consider the environment and how the miniatures will be lit and what kind of mood do I want to convey in the miniatures. Sometimes in this stage, what I do is I look for reference images to see not just within my bubble where I look at other miniature painters, I look up for digital painters, I look up for oil painters, traditional painters, all sorts of art, even in real life to see how light reacts with the miniatures and I think whether I'm able to replicate this situation onto the miniature. Of course, sometimes I'm not as skilled and I'm not able to replicate the situation but I will always always try my best so sometimes you can consider warm colors for say for example miniatures being very valiant very brave or is it gonna be a cool EV environment where a miniature is gonna meet its impending death or it's exploring some unknown cave these are things that sometimes pass my mind when I'm thinking about colors to use so after considering the atmosphere and the composition now we go to step number three in my painting process where I consider values. Values are really important because these are the guiding lines and these are the guiding principles that tell your viewer about what components are there in this little diorama or in this miniature. By considering the values, what we're going to do is we're going to break every single component in this little diorama down into its geometric shapes. So we have already considered the lighting environment and now we are breaking everything down to geometric shapes. What happens next? After we break things down to geometric shapes, we also know how the geometric shapes will be interacting with the light that we have planned previously and this is how we're going to place the highlights and shadows. So at this point of time, we also need to consider what kind of finish the materials are on the miniature. Is it a glossy finish where you reflect a lot of the environmental light so that you will have the environmental colors in? Or would it be very matte and very rough finish? Say for example, some skin and some leather where it would be a lot rougher and as I mentioned in my understanding colors video, glossier finishes tend to have more highlights and matte finishes tend to have more mid-tones. So next will be adding color. Adding color is going to be pretty straightforward then. This is where my tutorials come in and I apply the colors accordingly to the values which I've sketched. At this point of time, I try not to consider the environmental effects and consider the interactions because I want to see the entire composition as a flat straight light before I consider how each and individual components react with each other. So moving on, after that, it's going to be the interactions part. So not all materials will interact with each other. Glossy materials tend to pick up a lot more about the environmental light and you can place some of the environmental influences onto these glossy images. These glossy surfaces also tend to pick up colors of the objects which are near them. So say for example, as seen on this dwarf painted by Red Earth Miniatures. So what we can see is we can see a little bit of the hue color colors being picked up near the bottom of the pick whereas the headlamp is lit up at the forehead and it's picked up by the mid area of the mining pick right there. You also need to consider how some materials are affected by color because in the mid tones gold tends to be a bit orange however closer to the highlights gold tends to be a bit more yellow so these are the things that you need to start paying attention to for the reflected lights and other small details right now. And last but not least, we have to treat the viewer like an idiot. We have to increase the readability as best as possible. This includes black lining between colors and increasing the contrast between each color and also doing some edge highlights to showcase and reaffirm the form of each and every shape of your miniature on the diorama. So that was my miniature painting process and how I break down every single step for me to complete every single miniature all the way from a small space marine to a large statue. This is how I do it. Do you have a different process? Let me know in the comments below because I would also like to learn from you 
and all the other viewers would too. I'd like to take the time to thank my patrons for allowing me to do this. It's from their very generous donations I'm able to paint and record these awesome tutorials so that we get to become better miniature painters together. So if you want to support the channel, do head on to our Patreon and become a patron today. Really appreciate all the help that our patrons are giving me and I really hope that you can support the channel too. However, if for any reason you can't become a patron, that's okay too. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch all the way to the end. So if you could, give me a like and subscribe if you think I deserve it and leave me a comment because this tells YouTube that this video is useful and more people get to see this. Alright, so I hope to see you in the next video. See you.